Okay, okay, we're getting started. We'll start right on the top of the hour since we're recording. Welcome everyone to uh, a new hope for better St. Logistics planning. I would like to introduce our star of the show, the man, the myth, the legend, the guy who plays music a little too loud in the intro because I can barely hear myself, the Sith Lord, the dark side, he's got the forces very strong with him, Pedro Cito. Join us. <laughs> okay, okay. This was very late. <laughs> how, do, how do we do? How do we do? Yeah, how, 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 do you have a future in acting and, and movie production? I don't think so. I think we'll stick to uh, digital construction. <laughs> Thank you for the one emoji laugh, Jason. We got one in the crowd that likes it. That's all it needs. That's all it takes, Pedro. You just need one. Yes. Uh, okay. Welcome, everyone, to our latest user workshop. Uh, I'm Javi. This is Pedro. Pedro is going to be driving the bus for the most part today. So these sessions are more technical user workshop related. If you want, like a, sometimes people come and say, hey, can I get a demo? We could always schedule a demo or like a high level introduction to the product later, depending on where you are in the life cycle of your CM Builder knowledge. Uh, but for today, we're going to dive right into uh, trying to bring more value to your to your CM Builder experience. Um, got some new stuff, some tips and tricks. We can answer questions. So there's this little Q&A bucket at the top there. I'll be manning that. So if you have any questions along the way, if we're going fast or if anything you want to add, uh, ask as we go, just please uh, pop it in the Q&A. And uh, without further ado, we will get started. Pedro, take it away. Okay. Thank you, Javi. Uh, let me just reshare over here without the, the <laughs> without the music. Uh, okay, so this is a good one. Thanks everyone for joining. So let's start. Um, today we're gonna focus on a couple of like uh, new features that like usually our our uh, structure is that we're gonna go through some new features features first, and then we're gonna go and like show you guys a lot of like uh, tips and tricks as well like the that you can use and then what will be like the features that we're working on that's almost like being released like the coming soon ones okay so um yeah let's start so the first one that i want to show today is our new terrain features so basically we have a a new feature where you can import a new surface for your terrain and that our, we will generate a new terrain for you using that GOB import, right? So you see over here, this little schematic view is just to show that you have like a original terrain in red. You bring in the GOB file, you position that GOB file according to your Z elevation, your X, Y uh, location as well. And then from there, we will generate a new terrain. Also, another, another thing about the, the terrain that I'm gonna show right away is that uh, we have done like a recent update to um, put you, to help you keep the resolution of your map whenever you create an excavation with a new terrain. So this is a little bit of an like schematic view as well. Like I'm gonna show uh, uh, that on CMB there right away, but it's just show like some of our users have uh, reported that whenever you have a custom terrain and then you create an excavation, the terrain kind of like goes back to what it was before with like a low resolution. So this is something that we had to do before because like we had a technical limitation about that. But now with this new feature, your terrain resolution will be maintained, right? So you see over here, once you have done, like this is the past, right? Whenever you've done an excavation, the resolution within the excavation boundary was reduced because like to make the computation a little bit like simpler. And now uh, with the new tool, we maintain that resolution going on. Okay, so let me close this presentation over here and let's jump right into it. So the first thing that I need um, that I want to ask everyone to do once you start working with the new terrain and so on and so forth is to go over here on your scenario settings so basically your scenario settings the way that you access it is just expanding this sidebar navigation and then clicking over here in scenario settings and you will open this view so this is something that we plan to keep to bring more uh, information in this scenario settings over here but uh, we need to turn all of these two on over here so you improve your performance for your excavation and also the topographic surface will be we will keep the the accuracy for it so okay so i'm gonna show now how how we're gonna work with that so basically in this project over here this is just a simple project i brought in a 
GLB surface to represent what is going to be like. It can become. It can come from a drone scan. It can come from. Um, Maybe like someone did a survey and created that surface in another software, another CAD software. But basically, let's consider that you have a proper surface that you can import over here. Right now, that surface has to be on GLB format, um, but we plan to expand this to other formats as well. Um, so if you have something like this for your project and you need someone to convert that to a GLB or like give you some best practices on how to do that and also teach you how to do that, just let me know. We can have like a one one session that I will explain how to do that using some free software that uh, is out there, okay? So basically, I'm considering that I brought in this this uh, this surface over here, and this surface is located uh, accurately on this terrain. So to look at the surface, you can be basically just go over here in your translate functions and then just move it around and then place it wherever you want. You can also place with the Z elevation. So usually a surface that's coming from a drone scan will have a texture to it as well. And you can use that texture to help you locate the surface accordingly to the map, right? So because it will show like the same reference with your satellite views that we have over here in Builder. So uh, this case over here is just like a simple project. So it's, the surface is a simple surface. Uh, but you can use the same texture that you have in one to position it according to the other. And also the Z elevation, that's where you would need to in your surface that you imported to define what is what is a control point so let's say for example that i know that this point of my surface over here this area is supposed to be at a certain elevation i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to click on my review function over here put in a sea level elevation measurement and then i can measure what is the location of my control point so Let's imagine that this actually is not supposed to be 91.08 in my drawings over here or in my references. I know that this is this location is supposed to be at 92, for example. So I can double click on my surface, click on my little arrow over here and use one of the tools that we had in the past. That is the the that I showed in the past. That is the mathematical uh, operations that you can create on the input fields fields. So, for example, I'm going to I need to move the surface up over here by to get to the 92 elevation. So I'm going to type in over here 92 minus 91.08, which is the elevation that it is right now. And when I hit enter, this surface moved up by the difference exactly to get me to the 92 reference over here. OK, so this uh, this measurement that it was over here before remains where it, it, where it was, but you can create a new measurement just to check if this is a 92 so you see so basically this is how you accurately position that surface on your z uh, axis okay now considering that this surface is in the right location i'm going to go over here in my project setup click on my custom terrain and then uh, before we our custom terrain tool was using points to adjust your terrain now we're going to use this mesh over here so i'm going to click on this drop down click on meshes and then over here, it's going to be a list of all the meshes that have been imported to this scenario. If you want to take a mesh from another from that has been imported in other scenarios, but it's in your project, you can click over here and see what are the meshes that you have, or you can upload your file right away from here. So I'm going to select this guy. This is this the surface that is over there. And when I hit load, this will show me a little bit of a control over here so I can define what is the blending method that I'm going to use for that and the smoothing distance. This is over here is a little bit kind of like a um, small adjustment so you can get like a, 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 surf, a terrain that is more uh, uh, adequate for you. So you can see over here what is the blending method that we have, like the S curve, the smooth and the linear, right? So it's showing like what are the the adaptations that we're gonna do. And the smoothing distance is basically how far from the mesh we are gonna apply those adjustments as well. So for example, if this mesh was only like a specific part of my terrain, how far away from that we're gonna extrapolate those um, those adjustments, okay? And when I, I can generate a preview over here to, to see how it goes, or I can simply go and click and save, and this is going to compute that uh, adjustment. And you can see right away over here that my map has been adjusted, but like the surface is still there. So I'm going to click on my surface. 
uh, and hit hide. So you can see the difference that this applied over here. So all the parts of my terrain, the whole surface of my terrain just moved up to adapt to that, um, to that GLB. Okay, so you can see the difference over here by reverting to the default project map. So if I revert this, you can see the difference. And then if I set my new terrain as initial terrain, you can see how it goes. Okay, and it's really, really matching this new surface over here. So this is going to save you guys a lot of time whenever you want to um, to um, adapt your terrain to existing references. Cool. You can also couple, can I can I add a couple yeah. things? So we get a lot of questions um, around accuracy of the excavation takeoff. So this as part when you start doing your cuts and fills and ramps, you know, obviously the the closer to reality you have the top of the map, the more accurate your uh, bulk and loose volumes based on swell factor of your QT of your excavation will be as well. So a lot of people mm -hmm. ask about that. So it's it's helpful to match an imported model and all your drawings and documents to the to the, act, the actual location, but it also helps with some of the data extraction uh, as facets of CM Builder as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you don't, uh, that surface that we just created over here, we'll keep, we remain in this project, but let's say that you're done with it and you you don't want to use that surface anymore because you, you, you bring it, it once, you can simply go in your buildings over here, imported mesh, which is where I brought in the surface. And even if you remove this from your scenario, your terrain will remain where it is, right? And if you need to adapt the surface, this uh, this terrain, it will bring back that GLB to this scenario. Okay, so um, the way that it is right now, I can simply start working without having that GLB surface in front of my actions. And the second part of this that I would like to tackle is that, um, again, a couple of customers were, were reporting that whenever you have a custom terrain, you create an excavation, and then the terrain would kind of like adjust to like, a version of what it was before. Now, we, if I start creating my excavation cuts over here, the terrain will not change. So if I can create a cut and finish this cut and nothing around my terrain is gonna change. Even in the excavation boundaries, I like as you see over here that was created, this will keep the way that it was. And now we have like a proper terrain for you to start creating your excavation steps. Okay, so this is part one of our uh, new features that we already uh, deployed. And now Pedro, let's go. Pedro, when, yep. just, uh, just doubling down for those who joined a little late, if you have questions, let's say on this area, just, just pop them in the Q&A part of the chat and we'll, we'll tackle them as we go. If you want to wait till the end, that's fine too. But if there's a, something specific to this that you want to ask, please fire away and I'll, I'll man it from there. Go ahead, Pedro. Okay, so. The second thing that I want to talk about today is something that a lot of customers have been requesting lately. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure that I'm going to make like 70% of the people in this call super happy. So basically now we have, um, this is going to be deployed next week. Uh, so Monday, I'm expecting this to be live already. But now we have a connection between drawings and milestones. No rounders of applauses? No? Okay, cool. <laughs> So yeah, it's because they're muted. It's because they're muted. Right? <laughs> I'm pretty sure there are some people over there like say yes, finally. Okay, well, cool. What, once we found out you're a, once we found out you're a Sith, you know, we got nervous. <laughs> oh, I think. Yeah, we got oh, some some. Ben, there, you go, ben. there you go, Ben. There you go, Ben. Thank you. Thank you. Ben's gift. Ben's gift game is strong. We know that. Nice, nice, nice. So yeah, so now we have that option of like connecting drawings to milestones. So I'm going to use this uh, environment over here to show you that. So basically I have a couple of drawings over here. And if I go back to my first milestone, so this one, and I move forward, uh, you see that a drawing showed up. I didn't like hide or show the drawing. It is already connected to that milestone. And if I go forward and forward, the drawing goes away because I don't need that drawing anymore. Okay, so the way to do that is I brought in over here like a couple of other drawings that I can show as an example. So let's take over here, go into my level two um, milestone over here, structural level two. So let's say that I want to show a drawing that shows what are the, the details of this floor plan, and I have this drawing over here, the level two. You see that now the height and show for the drawing is defined to be temporary. So I can temporarily hide and show this for my view. And now I can just go over here and edit, and there is a timeline for my drawings as well. 
So I'm going to put this drawing to show up on the milestone that I'm active in, and I'm going to remove it on this milestone as well. So it will show up for only one milestone. So when I hit done, now this drawing is over here. And if I go back, it's not there anymore. But if I go forward, it will show up. And on the next milestone, I have my level three over here that it was already defined beforehand. Cool. So this is a way for you to keep working on these different uh, milestones with different drawings. And also we have a definition of never show for these drawings because um, sometimes you're going to have, like for example, for this one over here, let's say that I want to use the, this drawing just as a reference. I don't want to put that drawing on my milestones and but I wanted to use it freely like show and hide or whatever I need it, right? So I'm going to take this guy over here and I'm going to uh, go in edit and I'm going to define this to be never show. We actually going to change this wording uh, to be something that we, we relate more to the connection of this drawing to the milestones. But basically never show means that this is not in my timeline. OK, and when I define that a drawing is in never show, this drawing will become a reference drawing and I can turn it on and off from here. So now this list of drawings over here will only show the drawings that you define as a reference. OK, it's not going to be all the drawings like it was before, because all the other drawings that are connected to your milestones will be a part of your sequence. Cool. So use cases that you're going to use this. Uh, so first of all, is exactly what I showed over here. You're showing drawings to bring in more detail to your sequence and to your milestones. And then you can, uh, whenever you're creating your, your presentation, you can see the new drawings that will impact more on that presentation. And the second use case that I would like to uh, kind of define is the drone scan, right? So this is an example that I extracted directly from drone deploy. A lot of people uh, in the call use drone deploy, and this is just like a simple uh, project that they have over there. But now I can have drone imagery showing progress in different milestones, right? So for each milestone over here, I have a drawing that is connected to it. So all my drone captures over here and when I start flipping through these I can see progress right away okay so this is a very interesting tool for you to use whenever you want to communicate progress with a customer and have like real life references inside CM Builder as well okay and the third use case for this is uh, more related to you whenever you're creating a sequence like that in a simulation if you have a landscape drawing that shows the the location of your landscape and whatnot so that is kind of like clean. It's also a very interesting drawing. In this case, I don't have an example for that, but imagine that I could have a landscape drawing like projected on the ground over here that would show the parts of my landscape that it's not really related to my model. It's just showing like, okay, this is the final state of this building. I have something else to show over here. Cool. Awesome. So um, this is a little bit about uh, the new drawings and what we have related to that. So I'm going to move forward to the next um, option of uh, item over here on my list. That is, we did some changes on the temporary hide and show action for the imported models. So in before, whenever you when we deployed that new version of like our sequence creation, the one that I showed on our last workshop that had like the color sequencing in, in all of these different ways for you to define uh, the sequence of your project. Now, um, before, whenever you did a, a hide action in this session, for example, let's say that I want to hide uh, that I am at this stage over here and I want to hide this wall. Right, so if I did a hide, temporary hide for this wall, before when I change my milestone, though that wall would uh, come back, right? So even even like the temporary hide would would like automatically come back at some with some actions. Right now that is persistent for the session. So while while we're still on the session, you, your temporary hire show will remain, and you have now this little button over here that we set all temporary hide and show actions that will bring back everything that you temporarily hit or show. <laughs> temporarily hit, actually, right? So in this case over here, now if I go back and forth, my my 
my wall is there. And if I do a temporary hide, also if I expand this, uh, that button will become this little tag over here and I can click on this to deactivate that. So this gives you more control about things that you want to see while you're doing the sequence and things that you want to keep hidden and so on and so forth. And the second change that we did on this temporary hide and show actions is that um, to keep it in a way that would prevent people to do some uh, unwanted actions. For the 3D models, we define that we this over here is not a, a clicking button anymore. So before you could click on this little eyeball over here that would bring back all of these, everything that is in the fourth floor over here, for example. And a lot of people were kind of like clicking on this by mistake and trying to find elements on the 3D view and couldn't find and didn't understand why things were hidden and why things were showing. So now this is not a button anymore. So if you want to bring back this as a temporary show, you can right click on this and click on temporary show. It's just like a minor thing just to keep people from like not doing like unwanted changes. But I also use the H shortcut a lot for this because it's like super simple to simply go there and do the H function over here. Cool. Uh, Javi, quick, you have quick, quick, yeah, quick question coming from from um, Ben. So does the drawing overlay per milestone also apply to drone ortho Im maps or images? Uh, yes, right? Correct. Yes. So any, any image or drawing that you've imported can be sequenced just like mm -hmm. the re resource in the model element. Um, and then the last one, does the drone scan GLB workflow have any issues if there are an existing buildings in the drone scan, if there are existing buildings in the drone scan? So okay. I yeah, you can answer that, but I think the, that, yeah. the, the, the proposed workflow, this is more for terrain. So if there is buildings, <laughs> it could, yeah, that's a good question. Can you go ahead? Uh, yeah, so it's kind of like the surface for CM Builder, it's a surface. We, we, the surface in CM Builder, there's no classification about like, this is a part of, this is the terrain, this is the, this is the building, these are trees, these are vehicles, right? So like whatever you bring over here as a surface, will come in as a surface and you will, um, it will like the, the terrain will adapt to that. So like, for example, let me bring back the surface that I used over here, this guy, let me load it again. If in this surface over here, I had um, a, a building showing up over here, this building would affect the terrain, right? So if that's the case for you, if your scan is not like a green field, like the one that I have over here, um, there are a couple of things that you can do to solve that. So I we have like a, a workflow in Blender, which is another software that you that is a free software that you can use. And I can uh, create a video later and post it online to show like how you manipulate that surface in a way that you can simply cut and remove the buildings and remove uh, um, trees and so on and so forth. That can also be done with Recap Photo, right? So Recap Photo is uh, it's a very quick software for you to adjust meshes that you import in. Um, but also there is another software that uh, another customer told me about the other day. It's like, it's called Aggiesoft that that software creates the classification for you automatically, but that's not a free software. So if you want to explore that, <laughs> you can, but uh, if you want us like a free solution, I can, I, I will create a video for that later on. Okay. It's just basically you're cleaning up that drone scan to have only things that are related to your terrain. Quick cool. question. If you yeah. just like, let's say they don't have the ability to do that. I'm just, I'm actually just asking. Mm -hmm. You, in theory, you could, you could bring in the, the GLB future, it could be FBX file as a surface. It will adjust the train to match. And then you could go in and manually, could you go in and manually adjust points to bring it back down and smooth it out where the buildings were? If, if you had um, to, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be as accurate, but you'd be basically no, adjust it, the terrain on top of that. No. In that case, you can't, you can't do two adjustments on the terrain. Like we oh, okay. either use the points or use the surface and then you cannot like cut it. You can do that with the excavation if you want. You can just keep cutting like the terrains, right. but probably that won't be like as accurate oh. as removing the, the things beforehand. Sounds like I just generated a future feature request. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, but like a, one good thing about this is that imagine that this surface over here had like a lot of buildings. If I cut up holes on this GLB, CMB will fill out those holes for you. Okay. So don't don't worry. Like uh, even if you like there are like some patches <laughs> open over here, like missing uh, geometry, CMB will fill out that for you. Cool. 
Um, and just to go back to, to Ben's question, whenever you import a drawing in CM Builder, a drawing and an image, a satellite image is, is virtually the same thing. It's just like we are going to convert the drawings and the images that you import in to a rasterized image. So once that, that's done, like they are virtually the same object in the 3D view and you can whatever you apply to drawings, you can apply to the drone uh, or to mosaic images as well. Awesome. Okay. So going forward with like a couple of other things over here, we are also like having a completely separate effort in Sim Builder to enhance uh, what we call the first user experience. Like so the onboarding methods that we have in Sim Builder and like we are constantly uh, improving that just to make sure that every time that you guys invite someone from your company to start using Sim Builder, that person will have like the proper uh, instructions to move forward. But also like whenever new users, new companies uh, start a subscription, they will have like stuff that they can consume in terms of like knowledge that doesn't need necessarily to go for like a training process. A lot of people who are uh, prefer to be like self-paced and use consuming knowledge in a in a kind of like their own ways. So we are also catering for those people. And I just want to explore a couple of things over here that we did recently. So over here in the question mark, uh, in their learning resources, we changed what this was, this link over here was pointing to. So now if I open this, uh, we are going to have a new set of tutorial videos over here. So we're going to fill this up with a lot of videos related to like a, what is the step-by-step -step process that you, you would go uh, to complete a project in CM Builder. And like uh, we plan to have like a new video every week. Okay, so this is one thing. The second thing is the chatbot. So uh, I'm not sure if like a lot of people in the call knows this, but now we we replaced our contact us form over here with a chatbot. So when you click on let's chat, this is gonna open the chatbot over here. In this case, it's not opening because I'm in a test environment. So let me go to another environment over here. Let's chat. Maybe it's because I am in this call, but let's uh, whenever you open this over here, that chat bot will show up. Actually, this is not showing because I'm the I'm the user that that, that is logged in already. So um, this the, the chat bot will show up with a contact agent uh, option. So if you have like a quick question, like say, hi, Pedro, I don't know how to remove my zones. I don't know how to uh, delete a drawing or anything like that. Uh, so you can go in the chat bot. This will reach out to, to our team. Not That's not just me that's going to answer. Other people might answer to you. So, but it's the fastest way for you, for you to have like a, a quick answer in CM Builder. If that's something that we usually prefer to handle with like a call or something like that, there's more more complex, we will send you a link for a call right away. So I, I just popped a, an image of what it looks like in uh, quite a few people have, have already been using it. It's been great. Mm -hmm. So what, what it's going to do is it, based on the question you ask, it's going to try to point you automatically to our user guide or knowledge base on how to solve that problem. Like, oh, I'm trying to import a Revit model. What's the best practice? It'll just take you to that page. And then you get at any point, just feel free to hit talk to an agent and then it'll, it'll get triaged mm -hmm. by by a few of us here on our side and, and we'll, we'll answer it as fast as possible. And and then for whatever reason, you can always still reach out to, to us the normal way, but you know, this is like a nice way to, to get uh, early feedback on or get quick questions, stuff that you yes. have, uh, need help with. And there is the third option that we are kind of like exploring as well. And this is also something like an ongoing effort that we're going to make it better as we go is over here in the resources equipment, there is a, like a little tutorial section over here. So this tutorial will prompt up uh, like a couple of options. We are going to populate this with more and more options as we go. But basically what this means is that like if you want instructions of, for example, on how to place a linear resource in CM Builder, you click on this guy, um, the mascot, CM Builder mascot will show up in here. And the moment that you place this on your screen, some instructions on how to place linear resources will show up over here. Okay, so you can go over here and click next and you see all the other steps and so on and so forth. So you can consume this knowledge over here in a specific, uh, in a more interactive way. Cool. So now once you're done with like checking all these uh, information over here, you can simply delete this guy from your side plane. Oh, keep it over there. He's a, he's a nice guy. He's a cute guy. <laughs> okay, so these are our three efforts that we right. Have right now. Fun Go fact: ahead. that's fu also fully parametric. So yes, <laughs> the mascot. The, we really are trying to think parametric here. So the mascot's yes, also so fully parametric. Can do a karate kick, I think. 
uh, yeah so you can like say like, no javi i don't want to do that <laughs> imagine with this with ai right so like you're like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're trying Prompt. to do something and you're like Prompt. nope you can't nope. do that <laughs> <laughs> anyways so okay so this is a little bit of our new features that we recently developed and now i'm gonna jump into the tips and tricks session okay so the first tips and the trick that I want to show you guys is how to use a projected 3D model in a sketch uh, in different ways, right? So let's go over here to this Star Wars battle scenario over here. Uh, poor RDD2, the R2D2 was sent into to negotiate with these guys over here, but they are not having it. So let's go and create a trench over here to keep them from battling with each other. That doesn't matter for the Millennium Falcons and the X-Wings, but let's go ahead. <laughs> so basically, um, this is kind of like a, a suggestion that we have. Uh, if you want to reuse the same shape in several different sketches, for example, for an excavation, for a zone, for a fence or not, you can click over here in your buildings, and I'm going to create a trench over here in the middle. And this trench will have a excavation protection on the surroundings and also a excavation um, a zone projected in it, right? So I'm going to go ahead and start with a massing. The reason why I'm going to use a massing is because that massing is going to be my template for my sketch, okay? So when I click on add a volume, I'm just going to go in my 2D view over here, and I'm going to separate these guys from battle. And I'm going to do that over here, create what is going to be the size of my trench. Okay. So when I fix, finish that, I have a massing over there that's going to be my template. Okay. So I, I this is my personal preference. I prefer to move this upward because I don't want the massing to be on, on in front of my other elements. So now I'm going to go over here in my excavation feature, going to cut, and we're going to click on the scenario just to start my sketch. And then we're going to go over here and project and then project that massing. Oh, I'm able to do this. Okay, cool. It's because of like the, the angle that I was in. I was selecting the, the different face over here. So when I hit confirm, now that massing was used to create a sketch that was used to create my excavation, right? So. The next step is I can go now and put in a resource, uh, sorry, a edge protection on this excavation by simply clicking on my resources, going to safety personnel, going to fall protection, and then I'm going to put in a wood frame guardway over here. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to start my sketch, click on project, select the object. Uh, it has to be like on a specific angle, apparently. And then uh, I'm going to click for this one specifically. I want it to be offset from my excavation by a certain amount. So I'm going to click on offset over here, click on my sketch, and bring it out by, I don't know, a meter or something like that. OK? So when I hit confirm, now that same shape created my excavation uh, protection over here. And I want also to color this differently. Like I want to have a different color on the on the bottom of my excavation because then like this is also a nice trick because you can now create different excavations with different colors by using a specific workaround. So let me create just another milestone over here, trench two, and then um, I'm going to put in just another excavation over here on the side. This one I'm not going to do with the with the projection just to be a little bit quicker. And let's keep it over there. So I have two trenches happen, happening in different points in time, right? So trench one and trench two. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to color this guy over here with a zone. So I'm going to go into my zone action and I'm going to put in, I'm going to, I want to color this one in blue and the other one in, in, in yellow. So I'm going to create on the zone, I'm going to do the exact same thing, project on this guy and then take this element over here in project. But the zones are defined to project on terrain by default. So you have two options. You either move the zone down and put it over here in the bottom and deactivate the project on terrain. So you have a different color for that zone. So like this, for example, different color for your excavation. Or on option number two, I'm going to use the hazard area over here as an example. And I'm going to go in and start drawing my sketch. The other example is that you can also use the projected area. But now, if I project this zone over here, see so if I keep the, the, the 
project on terrain and hit done, you see that that zone is gone. Why is because that zone is being removed by the excavation operation. But if you go over here back in the excavation and go into your excavation plan, you can edit the excavation settings and go into your excavation color and say, I don't want my excavation to look to be brown. I want my excavation to be the same color at the, as the map, which means that the excavation, every excavation step over here, will take whatever is projected and show that projection. And in our case over here, with our zone was projected, so I can see the zones over there. Cool. So it's a way for you to color your excavations differently. I think this is clear to, to say this is like a tip and trick because we get this a lot when I color you know excavation sequences differently. Um, that to be clear, that's in our roadmap to make that just like out of the box, basically just selecting different cuts and changing mm -hmm. colors. But in as of today, if you, you might want to use this right now, this is mm -hmm. yeah, Pedro's uh, the tip and trick to be able to get the same result, but uh, with an extra step here. Cool. Yes. So um, this is the tip and trick over here. And I'm going to also show over here. Now the next step is to show how to create an interior renovation milestone. So in this next step, I'm going to show a couple of things that are already in the platform and a couple of things that are on like it's coming soon in uh, a next, like probably like a, uh, a week or two, okay? So whenever we are already able to show the, 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 the tool in like Scene Builder directly, it means that we are less than a month away to deploy that to, to the product, okay? I think so, please don't call me on that. <laughs> <laughs> So um, in this case over here, we have like that same simple model that I always use uh, because it's a simple model. But what I want to do is I want to create an interior renovation milestone. So let's say that I'm going to do a renovation at one of these levels and I'm going to use that. Um, I'm going to use a tool that's coming next is the defining a remove date for the important models. Right now, if I go over, back over here in the, this project over here and I select one of these objects, oh, sorry, one of these elements, I don't have a remove date for that element. I only have a start date, okay? But if I go back on that scenario, uh, this is running over here in our testing environment, as you see, I can simply go over here and right click, edit model element, and now I have a remove date. So I can, take these panels, let's say I'm going to open on these panels over here because I want to do an interior renovation at this level. So I'm going to go into this part, go into edit model element, and then I'm going to say that this panel removal state over here is the last milestone in which these objects are going to show. And my personal preference also is to color these differently. So right now, whenever you change the color of an element that you have imported, that will apply to all milestones, but we're already working on a version of this that you have different colors per milestone, and um, it's on, on, on this research stage, okay? But basically, another change that we have done as well is that you can color more than one element as, uh, at once, right? So let's say, for example, if I wanted to color all of these objects over here, I can select them all and right click going to edit model element and then i can simply put in a color over here that it's going to be applied to all of them so when i hit done all of them are colored differently okay so i'm going to take the panels that i want to remove so these two and i'm going to edit the model element and i'm going to show this in a different color just to highlight in my project what are the things that we are going to change okay so now if I go to the next milestone, you see that those parts will have been removed because I decide I define a fin final date for them. And in here, let's say that I want you to create a interior mobilization, oh sorry, interior like um, layout over here with some equipment and some resources. What we, I would do is I'm gonna, in CM Builder, we will won't be able to, in, when you're doing the sequence, you won't be able to have like a moment where your panel goes away and then comes back. It's either you define that start date and it stays there for the, the whole session or for the whole sequence, or you have a start and a remove date and that after that remove date, you won't see those parts anymore. But you can handle that with your presentation. So in this case of here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all of these panels over here 
And let me just hide this rally beauties for a second. Okay, so I'm gonna take all of these panels over here, these ones on the top, because I wanna do the renovation on this level, right? So I wanna see what's inside that level. So I'm gonna take all of these panels over here, and I'm gonna hide them tempor temporarily. And then I want you also remove the ones over here at the top. So basically I'm gonna select everything and then Control shift and then select just these parts. So now I have those parts selected and I'm gonna temporarily hide. So this is revealing the interior of that level for me. And then on the next milestone, I can simply add some objects. So I already added some objects over here just to define like the interior mobilization that I'm gonna do. I have a little guy over here. This poor guy is being supervised by a, a stormtrooper. We're placing some stuff over here, but my RGD2 hey, hey, over hey, here is just can you Taking go show the? Uh, can you go show what, the, what? I wonder what that Sith Lord is looking at on the screen. Let's see. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, uh, let's he's see. It's also, <laughs> also in computer. It's that's Inception. Anyone who does Key Future Friday, we we did that joke already. But that joke's old, as Ben Ben would know. But the worker is also. It's an Inception <laughs> moment there. Little, little uh, Easter egg. Keep going. Sorry. Yeah. No worries. Uh, so yeah, now I already created my interior mobilization kind of like layout over here, right? So I'm moving in some drywall panels. My little robot over there is spying on everything else. He's about to taser shock this little guy over here and release everyone for the rebellion. And then um, let's say that now I have this, all the parts that are on the top over here, they are temporary hidden. So they are not part of my sequence, but I want to show that in a presentation. Right, so I want to show this scene on my presentation where like those parts are removed and I want to see the floor plan of that level. So the way that we do that is I'm going to go in my presentation mode over here and then in this milestone over here in this slide, I'm going to click on the slide and I'm going to um, go ahead and let me remove this section over here. I'm going to create a new section. So I'm going to click over here in custom section and then I'm going to use a, a reference plane. So I'm going to select this plane over here and then I can double click on this section and move this down. Cool. So when I move this down and I'm going to hide this from this plane because the section is a plane, right? So I'm going to toggle the visibility over here so I can hide this over. So now I have a view in which those that floor plan is revealed for me. And then I can go ahead and just like put in my callouts, put in my elements over here, discuss this in my presentation and so on and so forth. So it's a good way for you to show the interior renovation steps and so on and so forth. Cool. Yeah, so on this scenario over here, what I showed was uh, coming soon is the remove date for the parts. Already in the platform is the multicoloring thing. Like you can select a bunch of parts and then color them all at once. And you can also um, kind of like create that section view on your presentation mode uh, just to review that floor plan that you're working in. Okay. One thing I, I also kind of um, indicate to the to the team here. So things like you mentioned uh, imported BIM model elements. Um, you have some some restrictions, but uh, we had a customer just the other day talk to us about precast, right? So we can also, what we can do is we, we are, if you search the catalog, you'll see things like interior walls and facade panels and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So you, if you have something that you want to show in an interior simulation that what, that you want to show coming from the truck in a stack, load it on the slab, you know, and then like sequence, you can yeah. request that, just request it in the, in, and we'll put it into the catalog for you. Yeah. Uh, so we can just have like precast panels of certain lengths, maybe parametric precast panels from the resource and you just drop them on there, show them on the truck and then go to the next milestone. If you want to get fancy, you can animate uh, with the, with mm -hmm. the visual graphs. So anyways, just, just want to put it out there. So if you want to mm -hmm. request something like that, you can and we'll add it to the catalog for you. And I believe they can also do that with like an imported mesh over here. So you can import like parts that are, you want to show them in different positions at different points in time. Let's say like a simple uh, prefabricated uh, slab or something like that. You can import that as a GLB file and that mesh will have like different positions in time as well. So you can show that like them being placed over here and then moved on to another location then placed in the right, the final location. Cool. Um, one thing that I forgot to mention as well is that with the the um, 
projection of the sketch, one thing that you can do is create slab protections quickly. So you take a slab like this and you project your sketch and then you take that to create your slab protection. But also, uh, Oh, recently, um, Callum told me that like he was using this to create like reshoring stages. So let's use this one over here, for example. So let's say that I want to create a reshoring stage for this level over here. I could take in, um, in this case over here, it's going to be hard because I don't have like a slab that shows like the whole thing is a prefabricated one. But you could use like your resources and equipment over here. And then you go into logistics and facilities, scaffolding platforms. And then you can take in your uh, single prop showing over here, this guy. Click on polyline. Uh, let's start a sketch. And then I'm going to use just one panel as an example. So I'm going to project one of these panels over here to create my sketch. And then I'm going to put in a plane offset to be, I'm going to position my, my anchor, my plane over there on that same uh, level, right? So when I hit confirm, I need to select on plane so my objects will show up at that location. So imagine that this could represent the outer slab of your, uh, like this lab edge for your, for your level. And you just show like that linear placement of these objects on the surroundings. You don't need to show like every single one of them in inside the slab itself, like distribute them on the area of the slab. You just need to show them on the outside because like usually when you're doing these simulations, you're looking it from the outside and the person will know, oh, okay, there is a slab, there is a reshoring stage going on over there, right? So it would look more or less like this, you know, it's going to create it like that. So you would look more or less like this. You can put in the spacing that you want over here. So like a feet, uh, foot or like two foot, feet, three feet and whatnot. So that will be your uh, reshoring stage. So usually you can create something like that just to show the moment where you're going to have your reshoring stage. Pedro, I got to say, I think uh, you got some Jedi tricks happening here. We, we went through tips and tricks. Now we're in the Jedi tricks section. <laughs> and it, I think you may be the Obi-Wan of the CM uh, community. And that in this case over here, my Jedi master was Callum. So thank you, Callum. <laughs> you're, you're the, you're the, you're the, you're, you're, the, you're, the, you're, the, you're the Yoda. You're the Yoda and he's Padawan. Awesome. Cool. So these are the things that we are uh, coming next. And there is a, like two more uh, uh, things that I want to show today. So this one is also like a, something that a lot of people have requested. It's coming soon is our resource wrap, right? So you, now you after you place a resource and you want to change that by another resource, uh, you can select that resource over here on your screen and you will see that there is a, like a little tooltip to sh let you know that you can swap that resource and I can click on this button over here and this button will allow me to select like for example another crane and then I can change this crane over there by a different crane. So when I hit swap, you're going to see that a new crane will show up on that same location with like a different configuration right so this is super cool because a lot of people were wanted that especially for fences so sometimes you start thinking like oh i'm going to use a chain link fence and then someone would say it's like actually this is going to be like a solid fence like a plywood fence or whatnot you can do double click on your fence scroll there up click on the resource swap go into your uh element that you want to place it over here and then i'm going to change this by i don't know by a solid fence so when i do that now this fence is going to show up like that. Cool. I'm pretty sure there are a lot of people on the call also happy about this. And uh, I'm also very excited because sometimes you are in a moment where you don't know yet where the resources are going to use. Then you place like a placeholder. And then later on, your superintendent will come in and say, hey, uh, oh, <laughs> someone over here is saying that he's working right now on swapping that. <laughs> okay. So well, we have to wait for another, hopefully, two or three weeks. Yes. Uh, and then that'll we'll be, be, yeah, it'll be in there. So <laughs> just so everyone knows, we push, we release every Monday. So uh, sometimes they're small, small things, but, um, but yeah, we're just constantly trying to improve the pro the platform uh, incrementally with an agile approach. So uh, we wanted to show you what's coming soon. So thanks for that comment. And the last thing that I want to show that's coming soon and is um, the connection with Autodesk Cloud construction. So now uh, we are already in, in the move to, to make this happening and it's already there. Uh, but right at the moment, the only thing that you can do whenever you connect it, actually, let me do this. So if I customize this 
And in the card library over here, you can look for CM Builder. You're going to find a CM Builder uh, icon over here, and you can add a card to your dashboard. So a card for CM Builder will look something like this, and then you will have your um, your access to CM Builder right away from here. You can expand this and you start using CM Builder from within Autodesk Cloud. So right now, this interrogation is live, and what you can do is to create this little window to CM Builder. But the next step of this uh, integration is that we will allow you to import models from your Autodesk Cloud uh, database and put these models inside your scenarios. Te te technically, uh, ACC documents. So we're get, it's going to start. We're start the use case we have for this integration, the, the, the one that people talk to us the most. They have the models st stored in ACC. They just want to pull them to CM Builder, right? So step one was get the iframe embedded experience. Step two, we'll, uh, what we're working on now is to pull the models directly from ACC. And for those uh, on the Procore side of our integration, just so just for a quick update, we um, are currently working on the next step of our Procore integration is going to be on pulling sheets. So a lot, mm -hmm. of, a lot of GCs are carrying the drawings in Procore, Procore uh, sheets. And then so we're going to do an integration on that side. And but models typically, you know, more and more are happening in, on the ACC side. So we're starting our integration there with ACC. Cool. So yeah, I think that's it. Um, we are, yeah, if you have any questions, I think that like we have many in the chat over here, I, I'm pretty sure that a lot of these tools resonated. We have a lot of people in the call. Uh, so if you guys have any I have, questions. I have one, I have one. Yep. Can, can, I don't think we ever covered this. Um, presentation mode. So we sometimes get questions about how to share and stuff like that. One thing that's pretty cool, we kind of snuck it in there without much fanfare, is can you talk about the title page concept of the presentation mode? So maybe oh, just a quick sheet? thing for, yeah, the cover sheet. So so what that means and how we'll play when you share a link, because mm -hmm. uh, some folks maybe don't understand yep. what you can do with that, because often on the presentation, you might want to have like your logo or a brand or a screenshot or isometric view. That is the first thing the client will see or your stakeholders see. Mm -hmm. So maybe you can talk about that. Oh, sure. So I'm going to go back over here on the project page for this uh, uh, this scenario over here. So when I look at this project page, I can see that none of these scenarios have a thumbnail. So that's happening because none of these scenarios have a cover page for their presentations. So if I go back on that scenario and I go into presentation, I let's say that the, the my cover slide is supposed to be this view over here because it shows the the objects and shows the, the my site layout in my logistics plus the building that is already done or I can do that for like any other steps of my way right but I'm going to use this one as an example and I'm going to capture a camera angle over here okay so when I do this capture camera angle this slide will now have a thumbnail, thumbnail and I can go in this three dot menu and say set as presentation cover slide so when I click on that this will have like a little tag over here to show that this is a, a cover slide. But it also, if I scroll all the way up, my cover slide will showing up will be showing up over here. And this is going to be the first thing that whoever opens this the shared link will see. So if I generate a link over here and go into my milestone presentation mode, um, you see my cover slide is one of the last milestones. But if I copy and open this over here in a, in another tab. I open that. Uh, the first thing, the first um, camera angle that I'm going to see after this load is the camera angle that I capture for my cover slide. And while this loads, I'm going to just go back over here and refresh this page. And then you see that this scenario right now has a little thumbnail because this one has a cover slide. Okay. So you see, like this, I opened the link in the first scenario, the first camera angle that I'm seeing is the one that I capture over there. And when I hit play, this will just restart from the beginning. Another Jedi mind, Jedi mind trick that we saw a customer do. So they wanted to have like a, like their brand, like a logo or like a um, kind of a, a cover slide. So what did they do, Pedro? They put it like below the map and they move the camera there to like, <laughs> say you want to have like, you know, your company as as before the first thing they see is like or or maybe a like an introduction slide for the project right you know like uh, talking about the project anything that you want to they can make the first slide like an image uh captured from you know, another which move the camera there and then move mm -hmm. the camera back into the simulation That's yeah so works. 
in this case over here, I'm just going to put in like a transparent logo object over here on the side. And this logo, I'm just going to make it like super big. And then I'm going to rotate this guy over here. So this camera angle could show, let's say, like an image with some uh, labels over here. So I'm going to put in like a label. And I'm going to move this all the way over here. And this is going to be like Project Death Star. Okay. Talk about themes. <laughs> so I can we're be, we're, now. We're beating, it. we're beating it to death, Pedro. But that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> so now I can create uh, my, my let's say, oh, my project start or like in, uh, any scenario over here. I can just like capture this camera angle. And this is going to be my my slideshow, right? So I can also go into my 2D view and put it like that. So Project Death Star, and then capture my camera angle again. And this is going to be my first milestone if I define that this is going to be my presentation cover slide. Okay. So now, if if someone opens that link again, this is going to be the first thing that you're going to see. So you can kind of move the camera there mm -hmm. and then move it back. And then have a go with that. Um, now the, the force is strong with you. Force is strong. <laughs> Are there any questions? We got like five minutes left. For once, we might actually end early. Usually, we're cramming things in. But um, any questions yeah. from the I'm, crew? I'm also gonna Maybe. put a link, a link over here for our survey on the chat. So if anyone wants to go in there and like give us a little bit of feedback on the features that we're working and like the things that we would like to see on these on these workshops, it would be great to have you guys uh, your opinion as well, and so we can apply this to the next workshops in the future as so. well. Since this is customer support related, uh, just always a reminder that question mark is your friend up at the top right. So click that question mark if you don't mind. This is where you can get to the user guide, to those le learning resources. We're pushing the fourth video of the of the new kind of learning what resources I hopefully this week issue um, and then yeah any future requests obviously resource requests this is kind of where you get everything where the chat is please uh, don't be shy if you so you have a quick question you're struggling through something just pop it in the chat um, and if you need to book something with us you can book it right from there as well you can just go right into the calendar of our customer success team and um, and we'll help you uh, as fast as possible so Josh has a question over here. When will the legacy sequencing method go away and the new sequencing method will be implemented? At the moment, um, the I think that the bottleneck for this is when we deploy this new version over here where you can uh, put a, a two date, right? So, and I think that we're gonna swap and make the legacy method being like you can, it will it won't be the default. The default is going to be this one, and you can use the you may be able to use the legacy method in a different way. Pedro, can you show what that means? Because maybe some folks don't know what we're talking about. So basically, there's for if you're someone who's started, like if you up to the top right here into user preferences, we have these kind of like um, the latest stuff goes first into experimental features. So if you want to do visual programming with our visual graph, uh, custom terrain, so some of that stuff you saw at the beginning today needs to be turned on, I believe. Uh, and then it's imported models to map to milestones. This is this new sequencing. The reason it's not gone uh, full live is because we need to add one more step to be able to do demolition. So we're working on that now. So once you'll be able to handle the demolition use case, this will become def default, Josh. So we don't know when exactly. And since you're already an existing customer, you'll, you'll still have the ability, I believe, to toggle. But after we go live, all new customers, everyone that starts new, we'll just start with that as the default. And apparently Ben found the Easter egg for this session today. So yes, the Star Wars resources are public and you can put them over here in resources and equipment. They are inside site conditions and there is the little guy over here. Cool. So you can bring all of these elements over here if you want. <laughs> cool. Okay. Um, we'll hang on. We'll hang on for a couple more minutes just in case any other questions trickle in. But uh, I just want to say thanks, uh, Pedro. Thanks everyone for joining. Uh, we will send out this recording as well. I think we had about 120 people sign up and about 50 people show up. So probably a bunch of folks just wanted to get the recording. So we'll send that out in case you want to refer back to it. We'll also put it on the landing page. We'll put it in the YouTube channel. So if you want to refer back to this anytime, just let us know. And of course, anytime we need, need help with anything, just reach out to us and uh, we'll help you. Oh, DJ, DJ, 
DJ Yoda. <risos> DJ Yoda, I don't want to choose. <laughs> awesome, that was great. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone.